So you know that Disney prince with bouncy hair and roguish good looks and has a crazy story of how he ends up with the girl at the end? Even though she was originally engaged when they first met? <sighs> yeah. Robert's pretty great. Who's Robert? From Enchanted, of course. Oh, you're thinking of Kristoff. Well, I mean, I guess... Wait, could they be? No. But maybe. No! Actually... Hi guys, I'm Libby and welcome to Punzi's Palace where I do all things Disney, hence the Punzi, and all things regarding my life and home, hence my palace. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe down below for more Disney and lifestyle content. Okay, so I'm not gonna say that Robert from Enchanted and Kristoff from Frozen are the exact same person, but I do think they share some really big similarities in both their stories and personalities that we just cannot excuse. So hear me out. First, let's get some of that situational, circumstantial evidence out of the way first of how the two stories are very, very similar. You know, like how both of their prospective love interests are naive redheads. You can't marry a man you just met. You can if it's true love. Now, if I could only find a place to rest my head for the night. What kind of place? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a nearby meadow or a hollow tree. Or a house full of dwarves. I hear they're very hospitable. Or the fact that they both have a very cute sidekick who seems to understand the world a little bit more than they do and are also super cute and love to just play around. <laughs> I don't understand you when you talk like that. She's with her true love. But I think she might be a real princess. <laughs> Both stories also have a gallant leading man who is engaged to the prospective love interest at the beginning, but then they actually turn out to not be what the leading lady thought they were. You know, with Hans turning out to be a villain and trying to kill Anna, and Edward turning out to not be Giselle's true love after all. Oh, and how could we forget the fact that Edina Menzel is in both movies and becomes a queen in both movies. You know, everybody knows that she voices Elsa and Elsa becomes queen at the beginning of Frozen. Oh yeah, but she's also Nancy in Enchanted. Hey girlfriend. Hi Nancy. What do you say, you ready to kick it? And becomes a queen at the end when she marries Edward. Coincidence? I think not. All right, but how does that show that Robert and Kristoff are super similar characters? It doesn't really, but the stories do have a lot of commonalities. So let's dive further in. So a big thing that Robert and Kristoff have in common is that they question their prospective love interests' dating habits. Like with Kristoff gawking at Anna for agreeing to marry a man she just met. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yeah, anyway, I got mad, and so she got mad, and then she tried to walk away, and I grabbed her glove. Hang and on! You mean to tell me you got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yes, pay attention. And Edward being baffled by Giselle being engaged to a man she's only known for a day. You're gonna marry somebody after a day because you fell in love with them? Yes. Pretty obvious similarities, but there's more than that. Both stories also resolve around the idea of true love, and neither movie resolves that in the way that you initially think it will. Anna's frozen heart must be thawed by an act of true love, thinking it's gonna be Kristoff, and then it turns out that Anna saves herself by sacrificing for Elsa. Kristoff! Anna! No! Giselle is poisoned and can only survive from true love's kiss, thinking that it'll be Edward, her prince, and then it actually turns out that it's Robert. Also, both of them witness their love interest being dead for a moment. You know, Kristoff with Anna being frozen solid. And Robert with Giselle's limp, poisoned body. Help me, please! Just, come over me. Hey, don't pay any attention. 
really go back to your party. There are even more similarities when we look closer at their personalities. Both of them are kind of cynics and question the whole fairy tale idea. How does she? It's okay, you know, let's just walk. Can we walk? Okay. How does she? Yeah. How does she know that you love her? Oh! He knows the song too? Truly love her. I've never heard How this song. Does... More so with Robert, but Kristoff does some too. What are you doing? I'm going to see my sister. You're gonna kill yourself. Uh, I wouldn't put my foot there. In summer! I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare. Also, both of them are gross, to put it lightly. Uh, Kristoff shares carrots with Sven, biting them after Sven gets the first bite. What's the magic word? Please? Uh, 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 uh. Share. Also, Fixer Upper has a ton of information on how gross Kristoff can actually be. And though we know he washes well, he always ends up sort of smelly. And Robert, well, did you see his apartment before Giselle came and cleaned it up? Disgusting. Both of them also underestimate their prospective love interest. And you forgot the carrots for Sven. Oh, oh sorry. Take these flowers to Nancy, please. What are you crazy? They're birds. They don't know where she lives. I love them so much. But also they both deny their affections for that prospective love interest. She is engaged to someone else, okay? As far as Giselle's concerned, I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to help her, honestly. This is a date. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're just, um, we're just friends. But wait, there's more. They both have several moments throughout their movies that are oddly similar to one another, like very same energy. Like, they both have a moment when they want to give up on their prospective love interests, but then they decide not to. She'll die on her own. I can live with that. Here we go. But you won't get your new sled if she's dead. Sometimes I really don't like you. Hold up! We're coming! Hi, I need a car. At 116th and Riverside, please. Thank you. Both Kristoff and Robert also have odd moments of staring at their prospective love interest that makes the girl a little uncomfortable. And don't worry about my ice business. Worry about your hair. What? I just fell off a cliff. You should see your hair. Why are you staring at me? I don't know. It's, it's like you escaped from a Hallmark card or something. Is that a bad thing? Both of them also share a moment where they start to really get into the song that they were initially against. <laughs> Both of them are also completely heartbroken at the idea of their girl reuniting with their dashing fiance, but they ultimately let the girl go anyway. Anna, we've got to get you back to Hans. Hans, are you gonna be okay? Don't worry about me. Get her warm and find Prince Hans immediately. We will. Thank you. Make sure she's safe. We'll see each other soon. It's not like we're talking about you. I'm gonna really miss her. Me too, sweetheart. Something also catches both of their attentions to notify them that something bad is happening to their girl. Kristoff notices the ice storm and rushes back to save Anna. Robert has the apple hit his foot, notifying him that something's going on, and Giselle might be in trouble. <laughs> the 
This is a little bit minor of a thing, but they also both catch their love interest at some point from some kind of fall in their respective movies. Haha! <laughs> Thank goodness! Catch! <laughs> Thanks! That was like a crazy trust exercise. <laughs> They're also both manhandled by some giant monster and their love interest has to come and save them. Kristoff with Marshmallow and Anna saves him by cutting them loose. And then Robert is carried off by the Nerissa dragon and Giselle comes to save him. Very large, but never crazy. And in the end, both Kristoff and Robert end up with their prospective love interest happily in a new way of life, but not married to the girl just yet when the movie ends. Kristoff, he gets a new sleigh, he's labeled as the new ice delivery man, and he becomes boyfriend-girlfriend with Anna, even though not explicitly stated, it's heavily implied. She's named you the official Arendelle Ice Master and Deliverer. What? That's not a thing. May we? Wait, what? We may. And Robert helps Giselle with her new shop opening and has her live with him and Morgan, but they're not married, they're not engaged, they're probably just dating, again implied at the end of the movie, but never actually stated. All right, so if none of that convinced you that Robert and Kristoff are both very, very similar characters, I don't know what will, honestly. I spent a lot of time comparing these two, so I hope I convinced you and you agree at least a little bit. But basically what I'm saying is Robert broke the mold of the perfect prince and instead became princely in his own way. He's a normal, average guy, a little gross, cynical, but ultimately he meets a girl who makes him believe in fairy tale endings and magic. He was that man before Kristoff was even a thought. Enchanted premiered in 2007 and Frozen didn't premiere till 2013, which is six years later. Anyway, I love Kristoff and Robert both as kindly gentlemen that aren't inherently prince-like, but are regular dudes, and I think they are very, very similar characters. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that they are very similar characters? Are there any other characters in two different Disney movies that you think are very similar as well? And let me know and I'll maybe compare them in a future video. So make sure to comment down below. Also, if you like looking at Disney movies a little bit closely like this, all kinds of different film analysis stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out to create more content like this for you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and give it a like. And until next time guys, farewell.